What's up everyone, a quick little video from me today. I've hit max rank with the Solarians and that's opened up a few options for me to investigate. And that means namely the new Arcanes from Rude. In this one we're going to check out the two Arcanes that piqued my interest which is Pax Seeker and Pax Bolt. Let's start with Pax Seeker, you can buy it uh, fully built from Rude down in Fortuna, 10,000 standing a piece. And you need 10 of them to make a max set. Once you've got it fully maxed out, it's going to give a 75% chance to spawn 4 head seeking projectiles on a headshot kill with the damage from that projectile split evenly between slash and puncture. And that is just about it for that, what the arcane actually does. Doesn't need more talking about that than that. I've had a video originally, well it was originally going to come out on Wednesday, however just before I was about to release it, it was confirmed it wasn't working correctly and it was about to be fixed in a hot fix. So I decided to shelve the video until basically that we knew it was now working properly. The change from the 100% impact that the projectile originally had means that the projectile has a chance now to proc both puncture and even better slash. But with it also having a force stagger as well which is really really nice for like procs for condition overload if you're combining it with a condition overload melee for example. Weapon mods also affect it, as far as I can tell I might be wrong about this, that includes everything from elementals to the new primed expel mods. The one thing that absolutely 100% does work is crits, so if you whack on more than 100% crit on your weapon, the bolt that spawns also has a chance to orange crit which is really really nice, and that means pushing your secondary to do more than 100% really is absolutely worth it. Now it's worth noting, multi shot does not create more projectiles, but it affects the overall damage of the weapon and then that affects the damage of the bolt. So multi-shot does still affect the bolt, it just doesn't spawn more of it. So that is pretty important to know just in case it looks like multi-shot really isn't doing anything. Warframe skills that boost weapon damage also buff it. So Mirage's Eclipse, Rhino's Roar, Chroma's Fury buff from Fake's Armor for example, that sort of thing. So combining that pit gun with a strong weapon buffing frame can also be super effective way to push more out of the arcane. The one more frame skill I feel I should mention doesn't affect it though, uh, it affect it is Jetstream from Zephyr. That does not make the projectiles any faster at all, which is a shame because that would actually have been a really neat interaction. But I would just thought I'd mention it here to say that it doesn't work. So what do I think? Well, it's really damn good against anything without armor. As soon as you start throwing armor into the mix, it becomes rather weak. For example, a level 100 heavy gunner, which is kind of top end normal enemy you're going to face realistically in a sortie 3 endless mission, just laughs at you when you hit it for 300 damage with one of the bolts. Because, well, well, because armor. It's always been broken, but that's a discussion for another day. Even though heavily armored units, though, laugh at you, it will absolutely demolish squishy factions like the Corpus and the Infested. Plus, if you use your weapon to take down those beefy armoured enemies, more often than not you're going to kill the squishier trash mods around it. And that means that if you're accurate, or doing something like I am, where you're kind of abusing the effect of Catch Moon's Plasmore style effect, you can focus on those heavy, army tar uh, the heavy targets and ignore the trash, because with the 75% chance to spawn the bolts, it's pretty reliable. More often than not, you're going to kill several targets around your primary target every time. The one thing that it's actually especially good at is getting rid of nullifiers because the bolts ignore the bubble of the nullifier and since nullifiers are super squishy, a pack seeker arcane on a kit gun becomes the ultimate nullifier destroyer. Even after the fix during the week, seeker is still incredibly good. It's worth the standing and it's going to be a really solid addition to your kick gun no matter what type of barrel you've got going on. I would say that it's a fun one since it's one hell of a fun spectacle when you hit multiple heads at once. This almost sort of confetti of shards going flying everywhere. Reminds me of a lot of Halo and the Grunt birthday party except with the Warframe's traditional twist and that is the confetti can kill. I love it, I like it a lot and we'll be using Seeker a ton. Second one to talk about is Pax Bolt. This one takes like two seconds to actually explain quite frankly because it's super simple. On a headshot kill you have a 50% chance to get an additional 30% efficiency and power strength on your next ability for four seconds. And well, that's it. It's not affected by anything whatsoever so no cool interactions from that point of view. However, it should be noted that efficiency is still hard capped at 175%, and as far as I can tell, Pax Bolt cannot take it past that, so if you're running max efficiency on your frame, you're not going to get any bonus from the extra efficiency. 
But where this arcane does shine is on frames when you're running either low efficiency or where you need an additional burst of power strength. For example, in the footage, this is a 45% efficiency chroma, so a max blind rage and no efficiency mods whatsoever. So the efficiency help increase from Bolt helps a ton. And because of that, it means I can recast my Vex armor so much cheaper. If I wait to have the Bolt prop before I cast Vex armor in the first place, I can also take advantage of the power strength buff. And that's because abilities that are channeled or can be recast before they drop, like Vex armor, Shadows of the Dead or stuff like Mend and Maim or Peacemaker, provided the ability is cast when the strength buff is active, will stay active for the entire duration of the ability. So with Vex armor or Shield of Shadows where recasting it makes it so it never actually has to drop, you can always take advantage of that power strength. But that efficiency means that recasting is actually going to be cheaper. So while you don't get even more strength, it doesn't add more on, that efficiency allows you to keep that strength buff going much, much longer. So do I like Pax Bolt? Well, it now has an indicator at the top of the screen to let you know it's propped. And so now that it has that, I do. When it originally came out, there was no indication that we had it working. So it was a bit of a guessing game. And you sort of trusted that it had already propped. But now you can see that, you, you know, you can play around it. Make informed decisions as to when to use certain abilities and even replace mods from your frame provided you're confident you can proc it reliably. You could remove a power drift or intensify or even growing power if you're using like if you're only using them to hit a certain power strength number. Like I do with my Umbral Necros for example and the Shield of Shadows 90% um, damage resistance you require a certain power strength number. So I'm using certain mods just to make sure I hit that and like, it means I can actually re remove those if I wanted to. Um, that allows you, that basically allows me an extra mod slot to do something else with. Or you could remove stream, hell you could even remove fleeting expertise. That not only transfers the efficiency from the mod and your frame to the arcane instead but also gives you additional duration in your abilities too. So for an arcane that sounds super, super simple, with no real direct interactions with stuff, it can actually affect a huge amount and can actually lead to ra some rather interesting build combinations. Plus the ability to potentially even free up mod slots if you're using a catch moon and proccing the arcane super reliably. I like it quite a bit, and I definitely can see myself playing around with some builds with this in the future. So that's my look at these two Arcanes from Fortuna. I will try and get the other two and do a video on those in the very near future. I was super underwhelmed by the description, so I decided to focus on those. It sounded actually interesting and fun. Apologies for the lack of content this week. I've had a bit of a bad week. Um, I pushed myself very hard after Fortuna came out with streams and like making sure I had everything ready for content. So much so that I was barely sleeping, doing a ridiculous hours, and I ended up passing out, falling down the stairs. <laughs> Um, thankfully, like, um, there was nothing broken, I had an x ray it just turns out my ankle was sprained, not broken, which is very, very lucky, but I just basically decided I needed to take some time off and recover. But I'm all good now, more content's going to be following in the next few days. Thank you all so much for your support on all of these videos, but for now, many thanks for watching, and I shall see you in the next one.